I did not foresee Serenoa becoming king of Glenbrook. What became of the abdicated King Roland? Official reports say he left the capital to live a life of seclusion. But rumor has it that he absconded after losing a duel to Lord Serenoa. Roland concealed his identity and fought hard to reclaim his kingdom. He would not so easily relinquish the throne. The rumors are likely closer to the truth than the reports. So, House Woolfort usurped the throne. I did not take Serenoa for a man who had cast off the shackles of servitude by force. How fascinating it would be if the caged hawk broke free to soar the skies. Without Prince Roland around, there is hope yet of restoring our relations with Glenbrook. Perhaps we could ask Lady Frederica to help us negotiate. Glenbrook holds the salt crystal veins in their hands. No amount of negotiations would end in our favor. A bird that has flown the coop must be shot down. Whether they perish or return to a cage is up to them. King Serenoa invites Archduke Gustadolf to Glenbrook in hopes of securing an alliance with the duchy. Gustadolf accepts the secret invitation and makes his way to Whiteholm Castle. However, the salt crystal deposits uncovered in the Grand Nozellian Mines are currently in the hands of Serenoa. A meeting between the two great rulers comes with equally great risk. What is the meaning of this, Lord Benedict? It is as I said. The Kingdom of Glenbrook will cease all business with the Norzelia Consortium. The related parties should leave Glenbrook immediately, and any assets remaining shall be seized by the Kingdom. This is madness! Not only will you cut your ties with Hyzant, but the Consortium as well? How do you intend to get your salt now? You needn't worry about that. So it's true. Glenbrook has mined salt crystals from deep beneath the earth. It is no business of the Consortiums. You dare slight us after all we've done for Norzelia? The post-war accord said that someone must ensure the fair distribution of salt, and so we did. And we appreciate all your efforts. However, King Serenoa has no need for the Consortium in Glenbrook. The nerve of you people. Hyzant will never forgive such insolence. Save your tears for the long road back home. The Consortium was only ever good for lining its own pockets, which is far from fair as I see it. I see now. House Wolfort wishes to see the Consortium eliminated in its entirety. In that case, I will return to Hyzant as you said and report this outrage. Was it right to provoke him? Clarus may use his underground connections to stop us. That was my intention. He will now bring disorder to Hyzant's unity. More importantly, the new Norzelia truly has no need for the Consortium and its control over Salt's distribution. The new Norzelia? The world King Serenoa would rule. I have formulated a plan to bring about that new age. But first, our negotiations with Gustadolf must succeed. Sir, Archduke Gustadolf's ship will be arriving any minute now. Thank you. The outcome of our negotiations hinges on King Serenoa's decision. I must speak with him, alone. The Archduke will be here shortly. Thank you. Our future rests on these negotiations, doesn't it? Have you read The Power of Salt? I have. 
Lord Dragan gave it to us before he died. It contains all he gleaned in his research on salt. I thought it might give us a clue as to how we can convince Archduke Gustadolf to aid us. I understand now just how much potential salt possesses. Indeed, it is not merely a seasoning for food. We have control over the salt crystal veins. We can use this to our advantage during negotiations. But this is Gustadolf we are dealing with. Pressure and intimidation will only cause him to bare his fangs. Negotiate poorly, and we will end up swallowed by the duchy in the name of Gustadolf's freedom. What do you think we should do, Benedict? Before I answer, I would know one thing. Is it your desire to monopolize the salt crystals, Your Majesty? Of course. The salt vein is within Glenbrook's territory. That would make us no different than Hyzant. Gustadolf started this war to end their monopoly over salt. If we do the same, he will undoubtedly come after us as well. So do you mean for us to hand it over? No. We will merely be used as pawns should we give him the salt crystals. Lord Dragan has given us the answer to this riddle. We shall use salt to bring about a free and prosperous Norzelia, greater even than that which Gustadolf imagined. If we can prove as much to the Archduke, we can earn ourselves an ally in Esfrost. Does that mean you have a strategy in mind? It does. Lord Serenoa, would you allow me to negotiate with the Archduke? <sighs> Very well. We must have him on our side. And we shall. Most intriguing. You once refused to bend the knee to me at this very spot, and now seek an alliance as King of Glenbrook. I could not have foreseen this moment either back then. Nor that you would have your own cousin slain after discovering the salt crystal veins. I hope you aren't expecting an apology. Have we not usurped the same throne? I have not asked you here to discuss the past, but the future. I am certain you understand that taking on Hyzant alone is a fool's errand. We must unite if we are to stand a chance. And you expect me to believe that one of the saintly seven wishes to defeat the holy state itself? We must prevent Hyzant from gaining complete control over Salt and consequently Norzelia. I even parted from a dear friend over it. I see. I have no objections to overthrowing Hyzant. Then let us begin the negotiations. Silence. I am here to speak with King Serenoa, not his servant. I have given Benedict full rights to be here. Consider his words my own. Hmm. So the bird did not break free after all. His vassal opened the cage door. Very well, then. But allow me to make this clear. If you wish for an alliance, you will give me the salt crystal veins. They belong to Esfrost for having discovered them in the first place. We cannot do that. Then we have nothing to discuss. Pray answer me this, Archduke. What do you intend to do with the salt? People need salt to live. But here in Norzelia, it is owned entirely by Hyzant and the Consortium. Their high taxes make it nearly impossible for some to obtain. Once I defeat Hyzant, I will abolish both that abhorrent consortium and its taxes, and allow free trade throughout the land. I would ensure that any who desire salt receive their fair share of it. That would make you the only one with control over salt. It is no different than Hyzant now. 
I do not covet riches like they do. Under my rule, the people would have salt. They would finally have freedom. This is the only future before us. I beg to differ. We intend to make salt available to all. Anyone will be able to obtain as much as they like for a modest price. You would put control of salt in the hands of the people? To what end? To change the world with the potential residing within every grain of salt. For example, preserving foods with salt would make life and trade more prosperous than ever before. Using salt in leather and glass crafting could create newer and better goods. Farmers could give it to their livestock, and it could also be used in various medicines. It can even be used in explosives. How do you know about that? These are but a handful of examples. If we give the people access to salt, there is no telling how many other uses they may find. Norzelia will enter a golden age of prosperity, and her people will thrive like never before. I did not take you for an idealist. I think we both know that the people lack the intelligence for innovation. They just haven't been afforded the chance. But with the proper mechanisms in place, they can be taught. I have already started work on a plan to make salt available over the course of several years. Do not underestimate the people's greed. It won't be long before they turn on their rulers intoxicated by the power of salt. The very nation you sought to defeat feared the same and sought to control them with their goddess's might. Hmm. Archduke Gustadolf, I do not fear a free people. I wish to leave them, but will fight if I must. That is why I took this throne. I believe anyone who wishes to rule the new Norzelia should be prepared to do the same. Tell me this. How did you know salt possesses such potential? And I would ask you in return, were you unaware of it yourself? It was all written in a book Lord Dragan gave us. It is the result of his extensive research at the Asfrosti Archives. Dragan? You mean to say it was the knowledge of one of my own? Had I made him Prime Minister, our positions would be reversed. So this is my punishment for seeing him killed. Very well. Consider me interested in the future House Wolfort sees for this world. As the Archduke of Esfrost, I hereby swear my allegiance to your cause. You have our thanks, Archduke Gustav. It is only a matter of time until Hyzant realizes what we are planning. Let us proceed to the War Council. Lead the way. Glenbrook and Esfrost have entered into an alliance. You and I are enemies no longer. I am glad to hear it. Thank you for joining our cause. Together, we will strike down Hyzant. For the Roselle as well. I am sure your mother would have been happy to hear it. Indeed. Frederica, do you resent me for attacking House Wolfort? I have come to an understanding of what you hoped to accomplish. Your duties as Archduke outweigh your personal desires. Precisely. I have no regrets for what I've done. Neither do I regret standing against you, or slaying Erika and Thallus. Not because I harbor personal grudges against any of you but because my eyes must look not to the past, but to the future. King Serenoa said the same earlier. It should come as no surprise, Archduke Gustadolf. He and I walk the same path, hand in hand. You've grown strong, Frederica. The Kingdom of Glenbrook and the Duchy of Esfrost enter an alliance. 
their combined forces led by Saranoa. Together, they set out to strike down the holy state of Hyzant. Sensing their movements, the Desert Nation summons Exham soldiers home from their march on the Grand Nozellian Mines to prepare for the arrival of the Allied forces. Though the walls around the Holy State have kept it safe for many years, it is now up to Benedict to discern how best to penetrate the Goddess's shield. Benedict, have you finalized our plan of attack against Hyzant? I have. We shall shatter the goddess's shield with Esfrost's death snell. We can then storm the capital and take Hyzant. However, there is one problem that remains. Transporting, placing, and firing the weapon will take a considerable amount of time. So we must draw the Hyzantian army's attention away from the cannon until it is ready. But they might confine themselves to their castle rather than come out and fight us. We must draw them out. We cannot allow them the opportunity to calmly scout about. Buying time against Minister Exham's forces won't be easy. The damage will be great, even if we do succeed. Esfrost cannot hope to triumph alone. Which is why I have measures in place to ensure our victory. Anna, did you send the letter like I asked? Yes. I sent an unsigned message to Minister Tenebris. It included details of his and Sorsley's illicit salt trade and their profitable underground arena. I also added that we would report it to the Holy One, and enclosed a copy of the evidence I gathered. Perfect. Tenebris will fear for his position and desperately look for any way to establish himself worthy of his seat. And what of Claris? As predicted, he has returned to Hyzant. Claris was master of the underground arena, and Tenebris his bookmaker. Now the merchant needs someone in his corner, and the saint needs a pawn. With nowhere left to go, the two will join forces and be the ones to throw Hyzant's strategy into disarray. They will do anything to defeat House Wolford. I see. We should be able to buy time against their improvised army, but there is no guarantee it will work. One last letter should be all the push that Tenebris needs. Another letter? Signed by Prince Roland, asking for his aid in destroying House Wolfort, who stole his throne. It lays out a plan in which Prince Roland will attack us from behind with his own army, while we fight Tenebris in front. What? There is no reason for him to doubt it. I forged his handwriting and sealed it with the royal band. But how? I made an imprint of his ring when I took it to fake his death. I thought it might come in handy someday. Benedict. Everyone knows of Prince Roland and King Serenoa's disagreement. If Tenebris thinks he has a chance of winning, he will take it. Even if the odds aren't in his favor. I understand, but does King Saranoa know? No, he does not. He would not forgive me for using Prince Roland as such. This was entirely my cunning. King Saranoa. I heard everything. Your plan gives us the greatest chance of victory. I hereby order you to see it through. Are you certain? I am certain there is no going back for us. Only forward. As you command.
His decision made, Saranoa marches toward Hyzant, certain a victorious end will justify even the most underhanded means. A letter, forged with his old friend's name, arrives in the Holy State, and all the pieces begin to move according to Benedict's plan. I see. So House Wolfort seeks to destroy not only Hyzant, but the Consortium as well. Yes. They would bring ruin to the Order of Norzelia we worked so hard to build. Minister Tenebris, you must have the Holy One strike them down. But of course, House Wolfort must be punished for defying the Goddess. Were that I able to chasten them with my own hands? Alas, I am unfit to command. But you, Lord Claris? are a master at assembling the mercenaries and ruffians in the underground arena. It is only natural for a merchant to have knowledge of battle. He must protect his wares at all costs. How heartening it is to hear you say that. Now I am certain there is no other who could fulfill my request. Lord Claris, I wish for you to serve me and ride to battle against House Wolfort. You may leave the issue of troops to me. You wish for me to command your soldiers? Our odds are more favorable than you think. You see, I received a letter from a certain someone not days ago. Let us defeat the usurpers of House Wolfort together. Signed by King Roland himself. King Roland? Truly? It has the seal of the royal family. I have confirmed it myself to be true. So King Roland really was overthrown. Were I in his shoes, I would also want revenge against such traitors. He also wrote that he will spring a surprise attack from behind during the battle. Oh! With King Roland on our side, House Wolfort won't stand a chance against us. Have you spoke to anyone else of this, Minister Tenebris? No. You are the only one I wish to share this victory with. I am happy to hear it. I will do all I can in your service. When you said you would gather the troops, I had not expected cavalry, Minister Tenebris. It was the least I could do to ensure our victory. I leave them in your charge, Lord Claris. Once you defeat Wolfort, a seat among the Saintly Seven will be left open. And I think none more fitting for that place as the Minister of Salt than you, Lord Claris. You flatter me, Minister Tenebris. I think your deeds this day may earn you the position of Minister Idor. <laughs> yes, with this victory I can erase the sins of my past. House Wolfort is coming his way. Are you sure you needn't any aid, Mr. Tenebris? I know you wish to lead the vanguard, but House Wolfort is not to be underestimated. Worry not, Minister Exham. I have given Lord Claris a certain path to victory. Yes, you may rest easy. Understood. Then I leave it to you. Let us watch Lord Claris triumph over House Wolfort together. I pray for your victory, even should you lose. The goddess's shield will protect us.